TV, really excited for this episode. I am sitting down with Steve Weaver, very successful entrepreneur. He's now a Vistage chair. He's building up some incredible Vistage groups. He just is an out of the box thinker. And I really want you to check this out because Steve is a great guy to know. Let's go jump in. Hi, everybody. Thanks for jumping on Giant TV. This is Paul Hitchcock, founder and president of Giant Jacks Media. We help you to grow and nurture your business and really fired up to have Steve Weaver on with me. Hello and welcome, Steve. Thank you. I, I mean, it's taken me years to get here, so this is exciting. <laughs> yeah, and I got to tell everyone, I was talking to Steve before and I said, OK, what's our agenda? And he said, I don't give a crap. Let's just go. Let's start talking. So we're going to start talking, cover some very interesting things. And I appreciate you cleaning up my statement for me. <laughs> That's right. That's right. PG rated. Uh, so Steve, obviously you and I know each other well. And the first thing I want to mention is guitar on the wall, because you told me the story of why the guitar is on the wall. What, what's guitars, plural, What's what's up with the guitars? Well, I mean, you've got to have a guitar on the wall, and this is the one you can't see. This is those of you who are old enough um, to know who John Denver is, or <laughs> those of you who are able to use uh, YouTube, you can see John Denver. That is a guitar that John Denver, a type of guitar, not the actual one. Oh, okay, okay. That uh, John Denver used to play. So uh, an acoustic a national resonator guitar which is for slide blues you know stuff from the 30s 40s and 50s yeah um, those are the 1900s for those of you who were <laughs> born after and then uh, a little fender so kind of a blues rock kind of set of tools and are you playing those things yourself um i attempt to yeah uh, yeah it's a good stress reliever and um, blues is very simple you know, it's three chords and some inspiration. So yeah, yeah. I can kind of handle that. So let me ask you, when you start playing, does your wife leave the house or does she stay in the house? I think by agreement, she's already left. <laughs> and so when she's out doing something, if I'm not, you know, doing any of my community or my Vistage or the other stuff I'm involved in, I might pull one of those down. <laughs> well, it's funny because just on a sort of a side note here, Music is so fascinating because that business has obviously changed dramatically. You know, Steve Jobs, the, you know, I don't even remember what that thing was called. iPad, iPod Nano originally. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, what's your take on that? Cause it is a business thing, right? The, the transformation in a huge way of the business. What's your take on where music has come? Well, I think the story of music and where it, was and has come from is an incredibly sad story. Um, and I did spend a little bit of time in the music business when I um, got rid of my companies. I worked for an organization called E-Town, which is a great um, radio uh, show, podcast, broadcast. Uh, they also have a studio where they do live in Boulder. Uh, so I got a little bit of taste of this, but the artists, uh, largely because of digital distributions, makes so little money. Artists make so little money on, on the sales of songs? Correct. That I think David Crosby, who we all know from Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, said, don't let your children grow up to be musicians or they'll be <laughs> destined to be poor. So it's, um, I think it's a little bit like school teachers and uh, some of the other less appreciated professions is the, the, created, the creativity required, the amount of work it takes, the years to make it in that industry um, are almost prohibitive. And when you make it, the payoff now is incredibly low. Uh, used to be incredibly high. So, But I thought they were making millions on these tours. You know, now they're touring, making – Money. I guess if you're filling stadiums and then the, the ones that can get the shows at Vegas, I mean, is that just a select few that are capitalizing there? Yeah, I think it's the, 
tale of the haves and have nots, a little bit like many would say is the current American story where, right. you know, if you're big, particularly if you were big when there were good record deals and you own all your music, you can do well. But if you're new and emerging, the, um, you know, but I, most artists have told me that they don't make money. They lose money, basically, from writing a song to anything that occurs on the Internet, you know, through Apple or Spotify or whatever. Yeah. The only way they make money is tour. It's true. And okay. that used to be very different. Right, right, and, right. And, you know, those profits have gone away. Also, if you think I have this rule I call the 12-time rule, which will make it 10 times for this. But if you go back and uh, look at minimum wage when it was uh, a buck 50 an hour, right. and now, you know, 14, 15 dollars. Right. So it's gone up 10 times, right. right? And if you go and look at CDs and albums, where they used to be six, seven dollars, well, they're not 60 now. No. So, so we're paying a lot less as consumers for music. Right. And a lot of that money goes to the distribution house versus the artist. And so cars have gone up more. Food has gone up more. I mean, the American consumer has bad deals, if you will, wages versus uh, material items. Music is incredibly cheap. In fact, I buy, and I don't mind admitting it, is... is uh, you know, hypocritical as this may be to what I know is true, but I spend less than 15 a month and I get all the music in the world, you know, on Apple for my wife and I. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which yeah. is like, I, I, we used to buy albums that were 20 bucks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you, you remember that? You'd buy an album. You go to Tower Records. I remember I lived at Tower Records. There was one in mm -hmm. my neighborhood and it was just so fun. You'd spend hours in Tower Records checking things out and then you'd buy the album and it was like buying you know a almost like a piece of art a cool thing you know you'd look at it you'd read it you'd smell it and you're right and those were expensive and now i think i'm paying 9.99 a month for spotify with you know a billion songs at my disposal you know yep. yeah. and so efficiency often strips out profit right, right. we know that from a business perspective um, and you've got to create differentiated value in order to create larger margins. A great bottle of wine that people are uh, interested in paying more than for an average bottle of wine. Music is almost a commodity now. You can't charge more for a fabulous song. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. But it's interesting because... You mentioned things going up in value, uh, and I was trying to think of, okay, there's the other side of it where things have come down in value. I mean, computers are a great example. I remember when the top two computer manufacturers in the world were Commodore and Atari, you know, not, not that long ago. And now, you know, TVs, computers, you go to TV. Remember when TVs were two grand, and now you can buy one for 150 bucks? So isn't that a good development in some way or no? Well, I can't speak to computers because I've always had an Apple. My first computer was an Apple IIc. Then I've owned Macs. Yeah. And I, have, and I have a Mac sitting here and I'm filming this on an iPad. You know, so Apple's expensive. Right. And um, I just talked to one of my Vistage members this morning who was lamenting his Dell laptop that he just bought and it was all messed up. And I said, oh. well, if you if you trade it in you can get credit i said you know buy a mac it's much more expensive and there are limits to macs that they're not perfect but they're incredibly dependable and they're and you know they're intuitive yeah and so i think and and i think that's a great analogy because it's better from a consumer perspective so you can charge more yeah right 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 right, right. i mean a new good max three grand plus yeah. Yeah, it's not an eight hundred dollar, you know, Chromebook or some such thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about those because I've never really bought one. So right, yeah. Uh, so you you mentioned Vistage. You're talking to your Vistage member. Tell me about what's going on with you and Vistage and what you're doing there. Well, I'm kind of a weird Vistage person in that I'm at the beyond the end of my career. So I do 
work with Vistage to sort of give back. And frankly, it allows me to interact with, you know, a little less than 30, you know, 25 to 27 CEOs right. that I get to select, get to know, help, and maintain a relationship with. So that's very, very personally satisfying. So I have one CEO group. Um, I have one group called a trusted advisor group, which are uh, generally smaller companies that sell to uh, CEOs and uh, help them with solutions. And so um, there's a lot happening in their companies. Yep. But for me, um, you know, I do my best to help each one of them with what they need uh, in order to succeed. How, how is that? How is that? Uh, what's the execution of that? You're, you have group meetings with your CEOs, one-to-ones, and you're, are you more of a listener? Are you going in there and giving advice? Like how, how does it all come together? I think the crux of being a good Vistage chair is being able to figure out the right question to ask versus the right advice to give hmm. um, and trying to really understand what is driving um, a particular issue. If is there a limiting belief, you know, you just can't see around, you know, what it is that the individual needs. Um, and Vistage by its nature is essentially myself, but a group of CEOs and owners uh, who all see things slightly differently. Right. And when we work a problem, magic happens because you get all of them helping you. And so there's a almost spiritual piece of it, right. uh, which is what attracts me. Um, there is uh, a great sense of fulfillment by the group in that they know they've got this band of brothers and sisters who can help them. I mean, there was a, I was taking a, a survey right before this a conversation with an organization. Um, it's called Heroic. It, you know, optimize.me is their website. Right. Uh, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But one of the questions was, is that I, I am surrounded by people who care about me and help me live a better life. Mm -hmm. And I could, and I was completely yes, you mm -hmm. know, and if I weren't Vistage chair and I didn't have that, if I was just retired and playing bad golf and guitar badly, um, I could probably still say that, but life is so much more rich right. for being able and being privileged really to partner with those individuals. So I'm not one of these, and, and people who know Vistage, I mean, there's two people who have two, three, four, five, six groups, and you know, it's almost like a business. In my case, it's almost like a church. In fact, a lot right. of my members call it business church. <laughs> no, no, knowing you, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, I, uh, you, you really come across as uh, someone who gets dialed in to the individuals you're working with and listening, locked in. So obviously you're getting a lot out of it yourself and it seems pretty amazing. Well, when I was a Vistage member, which I had been a member for a, a fair amount of times, even before it was called Vistage, it was called Tech. Tech, right. Yeah, and so back then, um, I can remember situations where my arrogant little young self was thought I knew everything and I went in and I laid out my plan and it came out very different and generally better. Yeah. A uh, couple cases we saved millions of dollars doing something that we would, if we did it our, without a peer review, uh, we would have spent more. And so I think it teaches you humility and an appreciation for the opinions of others. And, um, you know, so that's something I strive for. We're all trying to live the best possible life we can, contribute to others, you know, give back, you know, make a positive impact uh, on each other in the planet. And I think Vistage kind of fits there. It's part of what it does. Right. right. At the highest case. Some groups may not, but um, I, it is my hope they all do. Well, do you, do, uh, you and your members, when you're not in those meetings and everyone goes their separate ways, are you still ingrained with each other? Are people talking to each other? 
you know, stuff going on, communication? Yeah, I mean, at the very base, we have a Slack channel. Oh, okay. For each group has one. Um, we do lunches, we do dinners, we do, um, you know, I did a dinner this last week with one of my members. Um, and, uh, I mean, we had a great time. We didn't, yeah. we didn't talk about work really we just talk about each other and yeah. you know, life. Um, so it's not just business, but Vistage isn't just business. It's about, you know, our, can we be better? You know, uh -huh. so we, so we make better decisions and create better results. So um, that better leader, better human, you know, better citizen, better boss, better whatever it is, is all in play. Yeah, yeah. And there's no, I mean, you got to be real in your situation. They show up. I mean, you can't be quiet, be the, you know, flower in the corner. Right? I mean, people got to step up and be candid and be open about, strengths and weaknesses. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, and I think Vistage groups are a reflection of the chairs that we, who are, you know, lead the Vistage groups, facilitate them. Uh, they, we select our members. Right. So there are some chairs who inherited some from others. But in my case, every person I picked, and I, I, I keep statistics, so I will talk to 103 Tucson, Arizona area CEOs for every one that I will offer a spot. Oh, is that so right? A lot of, and that's conversations. That's right. not emails. So, you know, I talk, I always say, you know, my goal uh, is to have a, com a consequential conversation every day with someone new. Right. I usually right. exceed that. But... Uh, because we choose our members, it is by its very intention, it's real. Right. I mean, I can't imagine how you would pretend. I mean, that, it's not my style anyway, but no. this it's not politics. It's just, you know, like I said, a band of brothers and sisters here to help each other. Yeah. And, yeah. and if you can build that, it's an incredible thing to be part of. Yeah, so. no, I, I can imagine. I've heard your stories. They sound incredible. What was that? Uh, was it Heroic you mentioned? You were doing something on a site called Heroic? No, no. Um, earlier, it's, uh, it's an interesting outfit. It's Heroic. Heroic, uh, right. But it's optimize.me. Yeah, okay. So I think I've been on that site, but tell me, tell me what, what's going on with it. Um, well, I'll tell you what it means to me because yeah. it's – it, it is, um, if you try to live your life where you try to be the best possible person you can be, and then through that help lift others, um, that's a hard thing to do. Uh, and Brian Johnson, who is the founder and chief philosopher of this, it is a place where much of the old wisdom, this goes way back, you know, Aristotle and, you know, the Stoic philosophers and positive modern psychology is married. And the way I look at it is many of the tools I need, in fact, maybe even the majority to continue to grow, evolve and be a better human being are there. Mm -hmm. And so I'm actually doing a one year mastery class with them right now oh. which is pretty intensive but wow it's incredible and some of it creeps into my podcast so those of you who are watching this from um paul's massive network you know the little old me in tucson arizona there are some really cool snippets of it i i did one today on the domino theory which basically says a domino can knock down an object 1.5 times larger than itself. And if you put 103 dominoes, a one millimeter by five millimeter domino can knock down the Empire State Building. And so it's all about aligning your goals and putting the right goals in order. Right. So you develop momentum as a person and plan for obstacles. And so I incorporate a lot of what 
uh, optimize.me, uh, which is also branded heroic, you know, um, is uh, into some of the work I do in, you know, putting podcasts out and trying to help others. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, and I'll mention now uh, that uh, y- your contact information, getting lined up with you, your podcast is going to be around this video wherever people are watching this because I stream this. This is uh, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, maybe Twitter, TikTok. Ah, it's going everywhere. So, um, yeah, they'll they'll know how to find you, which is great. And um, uh, Steve, you're you're also uh, you've got the two groups you're building. Are you looking for more people to uh, a few more spots or who, and who are you looking for? Um, if we, so for our CEO group, we're almost full. Um, we could take three, four more if they were in the right business categories. Mm-hmm. Now I'm headed to Alaska tomorrow. I'm right. not sure when this will air. But let's say it airs in a, a week or two, because I know you've got thousands of people more important than me on these. Um, <laughs> by the time I get back, the week I get back, I have four interviews. Right. Final interviews with people who are saying yes or later or whatever. And so I get, that number could be zero. Right. Uh, and when it's zero, then, you know, it's not that I'll stop talking to people, sure. but I'll p- try to place them with others. Uh, for my trusted advisor group, we maybe need two more. Uh, and I'm talking to a person right after this call uh, who's a she's a perfect candidate. And so what makes her perfect? Uh, yeah, I mean, you don't need to go into specifics about her. But what, you know, generally speaking, makes someone good? Well, um, if you're a CEO and a business owner, which I have been, what you want around you are people with skills and insights that you don't have. And so a trusted advisor group, you know, is made up of, I have an EOS implementer. I've got a person who can help you reduce costs and do it in what we call non-emotional expenses. And we'll find them for you. You know, um, I've got a, a marketer. I've got an attorney, I've got an insurance agent, I keep turning here. So all around you, so um, this person is a banker. Okay. And um, she's referred by my institutional lender who provides capital. So it's non-competitive, yet okay. they're in similarly adjacent businesses. So, okay. you know, so I run all my members by my, or my prospective members by my current ones to make oh, okay. sure fit. And uh, in this case, uh, she comes as a recommendation from a member who's in a similar business that could be called competitive. Right. So, so but she- okay. Well, if you get the industry right, the business right, doesn't the personality matter too? Because you can get someone who just could destroy the group with their personality, couldn't you? Sure. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, so fit is key. And, you know, this is full of lifelong learners. Um, you know, Patrick Lencioni, uh, those of you who don't know, uh, famous author, business mind, said, you know, the three characteristics of a good team member, somebody who's humble, hungry, and smart. Smart is how you work with people. Hungry is you're hungry for the organizational goal, not for personal acclaim or individual goals. And humble is what it is. You're about the group or the company. The number one team in every company is the you know, top management team because you got to be on the CEO's side of the business. You know, I'm not here to make my bonus and have the company lose. So you're looking for win-win alignment. Same thing with a Vistage member. You know, somebody who's, you know, has the right kind of personality. You know, it's like anything else. I mean, I was talking to the uh, CEO of Adobe once when I lived in Silicon Valley, and I was asking him about his company. He says, you know, if you think about it, all we are is a bunch of computers wired together. <laughs> our people, our, our capital, they're everything. And I right. think that Vistage is like that. And yeah. I'm very comfortable operating in that environment. For sure. Yeah. And, and you mentioned something recently, too, where you're kind of also looking for Vistage chair quality folks 
a little bit, aren't you? Um, yes, I am uh, going to start recruiting, hopefully in April, for two to four new Vistage chairs like what I do. Yeah. Who are in Tucson, live here, work here. We've got one other uh, person, great person, who um, lives here and works here. But, and they're doing some expansion now. But, you know, once they're full, they're, you know, there's a person who lives out of town who has a group, a couple groups here. But we don't have, um, the number of coaches, chairs related to Vistage in this market uh, that we need. And okay. so I've found recruiting to be not easy, but reasonably, uh, you know, simple. I just need places to help put them. So I'm going to help these folks grow there because we need more of us here. There's a big need. Yeah. And remember, since Vistage is one industry per group, you know, right. with my 15 right now, there are a lot of those slots. I mean, I can't take another attorney or restaurant owner or, 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 or. And so we need more people who live here, who are invested here, are going to make their, you know, lives here, raise their families here, retire here, whatever it is. That's a goal I have. Uh, and it won't make any real money doing it, but right. it's more about um, when I leave and not doing this anymore, who do I pass this on to? Yeah. There's, this, there's not an army here right now. So we're yeah. going to, I'm going to try to help build that. Yeah. No. Awesome. I mean, you, you mentioned that to me before about how you just love giving back and this is another way to do it. And, you know, being a mentor, I would imagine too, for anyone that comes on board because you've, you built your, I mean, the way you, you have built your groups has been, you know, kind of warp speed. I think there's a lot of lessons you can teach other chairs coming in on how to get it done. Well, if you think about it, um, if you're a business owner right now, so we already had the difficulty of running a business, which is brutally, brutally complicated. Then we had a pandemic, which is kind of interesting, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. Got us down, masks. Yeah, the lawsuits. A little bit so going on, yeah. So then we had the great resignation. We've added that. We've got supply chain issues. Oh, and we've got inflation, and we have global conflict and the threat of nuclear war. So who wouldn't want to have a peer group to work with to help us through this? <laughs> oh, my God. Or a therapy session, at least, you know. Well, I mean, you know, if you're navigating that world in which with right. all everybody here in Tucson who owns and runs a business is complicated, yep. Man, it it's really nice to have some folks around you to talk about that. Yeah. And yeah. To where you can vent. I mean, we had a member who shared their feelings about all of what I just said. And it, while it wasn't pretty, Everybody felt the same way. And Hell, we're yeah. Like, Hell yeah. Yeah, we've yeah. got to figure this out. So I've yeah. altered some content. We're doing some work to try to get as much as we can um, that's new and happening in front of our groups. But I think building a group today probably is easier because, <laughs> I mean, the, it's the, I mean, who wouldn't be looking for allies right now? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, very interesting. And I want to, I want to end it with uh, just a mention, because I found it so interesting of your, the God awful race that you're participating in coming up here. What, what are you doing again? What's that thing called? <laughs> it's called a debt, debt, death run or something. God awful. <laughs> I looked God awful. That exercise there it looked hard. What is that? Well, first I think we need to talk a little bit about mindset. <laughs> because the key to success in life is mindset. Mindset, yeah. So it's all about approach. And, you know, and this is a Spartan race. Spartan and a Spartan race, right. race is simply a metaphor for life, right? Right. It's a 5K in my case. So it's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. But I'm not the youngest person you'll ever meet. But 5K is three, about a little over three miles. So it's not bad. Mm -hmm. We could do three miles together. Yep. But there's 20 obstacles Right. Along right. the way, just right. like life. Right? Yeah, just a little just a little side note. It's not three miles straight running. It's three miles with 20 obstacles. 
Yeah. Well, it'd be way too boring. <laughs> but if you live by, I mean, I, I, there's two sayings that I believe strongly in. First, no pressure, no diamonds. And this comes out of Optimize. This is one of Brian Johnston. So if you're not confronted by pressure, you're not going to be tested. Right. And the way you respond to pressure is to put pressure back to create a diamond. Mm -hmm. So Spartan racing is a great exercise in that as a human being. The other side of it is, um, is obstacles make you stronger. If you think about it, if you take a candle, like a birthday candle, you light it, you can blow it out easily. But you light a bonfire and a wind's going to make it bigger. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you have to get your personal intensity bonfire size and not react to things, be what we would call anti-fragile, you know, bring it on. Yeah. Obstacles make me stronger. Then a Spartan race is really just a nice sort of amble through the park. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I love it. I love it. I love the analogy. That's yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah. So if anybody yeah. wants to Google it, you know, the Spartan website is just about the most fun. And hopefully they won't find it as god awful the death race or whatever you said, but it, it's certainly entertaining. And there's some amazing athletes. You want to talk about real athletes Big not time. Make, who pay to do this, they don't get paid. No, no. It's yeah. there. It is a real deal. I watched YouTube videos on that thing. It's 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 pretty spectacular. Awesome stuff. Uh, Steve, obviously, you and I could talk for hours. Interesting stuff. Thanks. Uh, thanks for doing this. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for coming on again. Got to get a hold of this guy. His information's around this video, either up here or down here, depending on where you're watching it. And Steve, well, yeah, maybe over here somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but thank you, and we'll, uh, we'll see you again soon. All right. Good talking to you. Okay. Okay.